Hi everybody, welcome to Horse Rockets. Hi everybody, welcome to Horse Rockets. Okay, today we're going to be interviewing Leslie, uh, who has been on the show before and is about to embark on a really long hike on the Appalachian Trail. So we're connected with Leslie over Google Hangouts and yeah, we've got a few questions for her. So who wants to start? I will. Well, let's first get Leslie to say hi. Say hi, Leslie. Hi. Cool. Okay. So, Daniel, you wanted to start off? Yes. Are you doing this alone? I am. Whoa. All by yourself? All by myself. Maybe we should start with what I'm doing exactly, which is the Appalachian Trail. That would be a and great question to ask. Did anybody have that question on their list? I don't know. No, it's okay. I got it. All right. So tell us what the heck you're doing and why we're interviewing you today. <laughs> I am doing the Appalachian Trail. It is a one of the longest walking paths um, in the world. It's approximately 2,175 miles and goes from Georgia to Maine, um, which covers about 14 states and usually takes people about five to six months. Okay. Wow. That is really long. Okay. Glad I'm not going And you're doing this alone. I am doing this alone. However, um, most people like think backwoods, wilderness. The reality is there are a good amount of people. So far there's been a thousand people this year alone who started the Appalachian Trail. And a lot of them do it alone. And so as you go, you end up meeting people and you kind of cluster together because there's certain camping sites that you have to be at. You can't just hike anywhere or sleep anywhere. Okay. So at night you end up at the same camping spot as a bunch of other people. So it's relatively social. It's a very social trail. Okay. So it's alone, but it's not, you're doing it as an individual, but you're just ad hoc, you know, you'll have other people out there with you. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Yeah, what's your question, Rainy? Okay. So, don't show us your toes. Ask your question. Yeah. Oh, you forgot it. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so what have you done to train for this so far? Well, I am generally pretty active, but I lift weights, and I, since the weather's gotten warmer because it's been winter here, um, I started getting out and just walking with my pack on okay. and hiking. So a big part too is being able to trust my gear. So part of training is going out and using the gear that I'm going to take with me. Um, so using my tent, practice setting it up, um, walking with my backpack on, sleeping in my sleeping bag to make sure I'm going to be warm enough, and cooking with my little jet boil pack. Okay, so if, <laughs> do you have any adventure stories so far with just testing out your gear? Um, I did a lot of research, fortunately, before buying gear, but oh. this, not last weekend, the weekend before, it got down to about 20 degrees in southern Utah. Yep. And so I'm kind of on the hesitant end of, am I going to be warm enough? And hopefully because it's summer, it should be. But, um, I mean, a lot of it's just staying warm. So at night, it, it's a little chilly when it gets below low 30. So I don't <laughs> highly encourage camping when it's still winter. But it's okay. All right. What do you got, Rainy? So what speed are you planning on going, like walking or running? Oh, uh, I plan on walking, but mostly I usually walk on about two and a half miles an hour. Um, so as I go, I'll probably speed up walking. Hopefully I can get to three, three and a half miles per hour. 
um, depending on the part, but I would like to do the whole trail in a little over four months. So you're not going to beat Scott Jurek's record from last summer, huh? You're not going for that? No. Did you I follow that? Beat, I did, and I won't beat Anish, um, her self-supported hiking record either. Um, okay. It was like 46 days, I think. Good. So basically, this is a vacation. If you're not going after the record, you're basically going on vacation for the summer. Pretty right? much. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a low-effort thing now. <laughs> All right, who's got the next question? Me. What do you hope to learn or find on your journey? Learn or find? You know, I just want to go have fun. Um, I plan on trying to learn Spanish while I'm walking. So I downloaded audio files and I will listen to those as I go. But as far as learning and finding, trying to learn Spanish and I'm just going for the experience. Maybe I'll see a few bears or I don't know. I'm I'm excited. It'll be an adventure. Ooh. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think uh, I asked the question, or I've got the question listed later on, but you don't have anybody at any of the stops coming along the way. Your parents are absolutely cool. Are they going to be there at Katahdin by any chance? Um, they're actually going to meet me in Virginia okay. and hike for a week with me. Okay. And I have a friend who is going to meet me in Georgia and help me get on the trail, which okay. is kind of nice. And then... I have a couple other friends who might join me here and there, but okay. it's just kind of still ad hoc. On. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of it. Not a whole lot. It's probably easier just to go by myself, <laughs> but it'll be the company will be appreciated. Okay. What's your favorite kind of nature? Oh man, any kind of nature. You can't go wrong. Um, anywhere you go, outside the ocean, the mountains, the forests, like, you can't go wrong. It's just, I usually enjoy weather that's nice and sunny, but any kind of nature, you can't go wrong. Okay. So uh, you started a blog for this. I did. Um, and can you tell us the website for it? Trailbyair.net. Okay, so it's kind of a play on trial by error, but it's trail by error. So yeah. why did you pick that, or why did you start wanting to write a blog? Um, you know, I picked trail by error, one, because it's a play on words, and I think it's funny. Um, but I started to write a blog just because there's so much information out there and it's a way to consolidate all of the things that I'm trying to put together and get my thoughts together and prepare a little bit easier. Um, and then also to get other people to give ideas if they have one and be able to see like the process and that even though it's overwhelming when you first start because there's tons of logistics that go into it. There's tons of equipment and I mean it's not just like a little vacation where I'm going to go for a week and stay in a hotel. It's I will be camping every night and I have to resupply for food every couple of days and so I thought it would be a good way to just kind of put the whole process together and just lay it out. Okay. Um. Cool. Well, thanks for including us in that. We've kind of been enjoying that. Um, yeah. All right. Anybody else have any questions? What are the kinds of drinks that you are taking? The kinds of what? The kinds of drinks. Drinks. I'm not taking any. Um, so what you do is you get a water filter and you take a water bottle and you get your drinks along the way. So you just fill up and filter the water and drink straight from the streams. Okay, I'm so glad I'm not going with you. <laughs> you would love it. We well, did go to Greece with him, so. Yeah, you guys did go to Greece. So in comparison to Greece, is this more or less walking? Way more. 
Way more walking. <laughs> so are you wearing flip-flops again? Nope. I will be wearing Merrell shoes, actually. They have these really cool trail, trail running shoes. Uh -huh. I mean, you don't get hiking boots. You just wear trail shoes, which is great. Um, but they have, like, gaiters around them. They're awesome. I'm really excited about them. Oh. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I've i actually taken them out in the snow and in sand, so southern Utah. Uh-huh. It with all the sand, it was hiking, and my foot would be completely covered in sand up to, like, mid-calf, so the shoe is completely immersed, and okay. I had basically zero sand in my shoes. It's really cool. Same thing with snow is, like, I hiked probably five, five miles in the shoes and, like, two hours in, even if my foot just, like, would cut down into the snow, I still ended up with a pretty dry foot. That sounds... Cool. All right, so why did you pick the Appalachian Trail? Well, there's three major trails in the U.S. There's the Appalachian Trail, which is a classic and it's been there the longest. There's the Continental Divide, which goes down the middle of, um, from Mexico to Canada. And so then that, there's the Pacific. That one's a little closer to where you're at right now. So Yes, it's also the longest and the hardest. Um, okay. And then there's the PCT, on, which is on the West Coast which is also closer to where I am, go figure. But I picked the Appalachian Trail because this is my first through hike and okay. it's probably the most networked and social trail. And so it's kind of a, this is the easiest trail, it's the most well-maintained and so as a beginner for through hiking, this is the best one to go on. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I feel. What day do you start? April 21st. Ooh, uh, April Fool's Day. No, that's oh. April 1st. Oh. April 21st is 20 <laughs> days later. But Sorry. I actually am taking a late start. Most people start between March 15th and April 15th. Okay. You could have started his birthday. All right, Randy, why don't you ask this question? No, this one. Will T-Rex be joining you? Oh, T-Rex. T-Rex will be joining me. The big one or the little one? Just the little one, and he's about the size of a quarter. So you're not going to do this whole thing in costume? No, not in costume. Who's taking care of your dog? Dad, who's T-Rex? Um, who's T-Rex? Ask her. Who's T-Rex? T-Rex is a little toy T-Rex that I like to take pictures of and put him on Instagram. So um, you can check out my Instagram page. I don't actually know the name for it, but if you look up Miss T-Rex, M-S dot T-Rex, you can see a whole bunch of pictures of T-Rex's T-Rex's adventures. See, there you go. See it? <laughs> All right, he's seen it now, so now he knows what it is. All right, D, you got another question? What's your favorite subject when you were in school? What's my favorite subject when I was in school? Oh, man. I would say recess, but I think that's cheating. Because um, you guys don't get recess. Whatever. Every day is recess for these kids. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, um, I really liked PE. Um, the extracurricular activity, like band or... Um, just things that use yeah. that aren't basic. Um, I enjoy science and math and English, but I also like learning other things that aren't straightforward. So more abstract classes. Okay. What? How? You, what's your food supply on this trip? My food supply. Yeah, do you mail it to yourself? Is that how this works? Or do you buy it at the stop, stop, run right. away? So you can do both. With the Appalachian Trail, you can completely buy all of your food as you go. Okay. Um, but there's also places that you can mail yourself food. So as resupply goes, I plan on just stopping every three to five days and resupplying in town. So most towns... Sometimes they're right on the trail and you have to walk through the town, but other ones you kind of have to hitchhike into the town like 10 miles, and people are pretty used to it, so when they see hikers they understand. Um, 
but you just you buy lightweight food that's dehydrated. You can get noodles or like dehydrated rice or potatoes. Um, I'm trying to think, noodles, potatoes, rice, um, dried fruits, um, salami, tuna. Cans of tomato soup. Oh, my favorite. You get dehydrated tomato tomato soup, actually. Mm -hmm. Everything's dehydrated. Because your food is part of the most heavy um, part of your pack. And so, like, they have different styles of backpacking. But my base weight right now for my pack is about 17 pounds. And you add food, and it usually adds about 10 pounds. And then you have to add water weight as well. All right, but the food gets lighter as you go, right? So if you just decide to eat a lot on day one and then starve on day two, you know, you'll be all right, right? Uh, it's not how your body works, but... Oh, okay, sure. Can you say so? You have to ration your food um, to keep maintain proper amounts of energy in your body. Okay. Um, who's next? What is your favorite hobby? Hiking. Duh. <laughs> but why did she choose it? Oh, no, no. All right, what is your favorite hobby, Leslie? <laughs> well, it's not actually hiking. Oh, no. Um, I really enjoy anything new. Um, something that I haven't done before. So my goal in life is every year to do something that I've never done before. And so this is something I've never done before is a major through hike. So that is my hobby is trying to find things that I've never done before and doing them. Well, you kicked my butt two years ago at the Plavitsky Lakes. So, you know, if anybody's going to be able to manage to do this, it's probably you. And didn't we have Liza with us on that sec- segment? I think yes. we did have you with us, didn't we? Where we got lost. Oh, yeah. My feet were so toast at the end. <laughs> you know, if Liza we knew where probably we were, decided she was never going to hike with us then. Yeah. If we, uh-huh. if we knew where we were, it wouldn't have been so bad because then you'd be like, okay, I'm here, and I know you can calculate out your expectations. The problem was it was like we thought we were somewhere else and then found out that we were really, really, really far away <laughs> from where we thought we were. So, And we also had a time schedule. You know, as opposed to a more flexible. And we did reach that time schedule. No. But then what was amazing was two days later we did the whole Lake Bled 10-miler. That was awesome. Like, yeah. yeah. My my feet were so toast at the end of that, that whole trip. Though. Whew. That was funny. We were done. Michael made it, though. If Michael could make it 10 miles. And what was she? That was two years ago, so she was four and a half, almost five. If she can make it 10 miles at almost five years old, that is that is impressive. So, yeah. She'll probably be doing this hike in a few years. How old are you now? Oh, 29. Ah, I Eight haven't hit old. 40 yet. Yeah, so you got to no. do this before you get old, huh? I hit 30 while I'm on the trail, so uh, <laughs> be good. Cool. Are your parents going to provide you a cake? They actually bought me a personal locator weekend for safety measures. Um, that's kind of what I requested for. Okay. Cool. Basically what those are is like a little GPS, but the one I have is specifically used for SOS. So if I'm in an emergency, like I break a leg or something happens, right. um, I can just flip it up and send out a signal so people know where to come find me. Or if you're just trying to meet a cute rescue guy, then you can just take uh, that. No, I'm, I'm okay. Uh-huh. Let's see? Ooh, she said. Hey, it's a Studio C joke. All right. Well, that's really all the questions we had. I mean, it's Rainy great to talk more. to you. Oh, uh, Rainy has another question? Yeah. What time are you leaving? What time? Oh. Morning, night, day? When does my flight leave? I think my flight leaves in the morning. I bought it a couple months ago, so I don't remember. It's all right. That's what series for. By the <laughs> way, you have to hike the Appalachian Trail tomorrow. Sends you a notification. You get a 10-minute reminder. So, cool. <laughs> all right. Was well, there anything else you want to tell us? 
Nope, just that I miss you all, and I will have to come out and visit at the end of it. I need a vacation, so maybe we'll see. We're here till October. Um, we're actually looking at a potential trip to Israel in September time frame. Um, um, yeah, you'll have to keep me posted on that. <laughs> so, yeah, and then if you really want to hang with us, we will be at Walt Disney World over Halloween. Ooh. So, yes. Our, <laughs> our rooms for the timeshare are already full, but you are welcome to come join us. We're going to have to do an episode from Disney World. Think you guys can handle that? Yeah. Yeah? Dad, you're already telling the people what's going on. It's okay. Then maybe well, they'll tune in. We have 17 subscribers right now. When we get to 100 subscribers, then I'm going to take you guys out from McDonald's. But we have 17 subscribers McDonald's. right now. McDonald's. Yes. I'll take you out to McDonald's as a treat. But right now we have 17 <laughs> subscribers. McDonald's sucks. So <laughs> getting somebody as a guest like Leslie, just we have to leverage not the audience that we have, right? We have to leverage our, our personal investment in each other. It's all relationship-based at this point. So you're not going to get too? famous coming on this channel. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So, but that's a thing. All right, we're, we're going to sign off and work on editing this. And Hi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Daniel, do you want to make a plug for like and subscribe? Go ahead. Tell our, tell our audience to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe if you like pop lights. Okay. Now you have to look at the camera when you say that. I don't know. I like it. I that camera right it. there. No. The one right there. You say over I have there. A crazy feeling. All right. So we <laughs> like to thank you all for watching, and we hope you like and subscribe this video. Like and it. don't like if you eat your booger. Yeah. No, we'll take anybody. If you're a booger eater, you're still allowed to like and, and subscribe. All right. Until next time, Leslie, we hope you have your iPhone with you, and when you stop one time, maybe we can check in with you. Um, that would be cool. But we'll work. We'll say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.